the ricochet effect, ricochet effect. I'm Dr. Abini el And I am Renee Collins-Cobb. And we are the co-hosts and executive producers of the Ricochet Effect podcast. The objective of the podcast is to focus on community issues to improve the social determinants of health. This podcast will highlight community leaders, community issues, and community initiatives while discussing urban topics and minority culture in Central Kentucky. We are here this afternoon at the beautiful facility of WUKY as they and Project Ricochet present the Urban Art Collective Gallery opening this afternoon. And we have a very special guest in the studio, although he calls this place his home. Who do we have with us today? <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. I am Tom Goodell. I am the general manager of 91.3 WUKY. And I came to Lexington in 2004. Uh, I'm a lifer in public radio. I started uh, doing public radio when I was in college uh, back in 1974, so almost 50 years ago, and worked in Huntsville and Birmingham, Alabama, Carbondale, Illinois, and then came here. And uh, this is by far the greatest radio station I have worked for. I just We have a wonderful staff. Uh, we have uh, a great community to serve, and it is, it's a true honor to be part of this operation. DeBron, what do you have to add? My name is DeBron Thomas. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. And I have been at WUKY since about 2012. Uh, I mean, I, my journey here kind of starts a little bit earlier than that. I was a student at UK and I was a journalism major. And in a particular journalism class, uh, we had the option to do a lab, which was either uh, you had kind of two two roads to go. Uh, you could either do uh, the TV uh, and do, you know, with the UK Student News Network, which was recorded uh, in the Taylor Educational Building, or you could come over here to WUKY and, uh, you know, do some news features. And because I already knew that I was going to have an opportunity to do TV later in my college career, uh, I chose to come to WUKY because, you know, the thing is, Radio has always been my passion, and it was really what I wanted to do, and I wanted to gain more skills other than just, you know, being a DJ, because I was already doing that at uh, RFL at the time, and the news department here, I mean, their their work pretty much speaks for itself, so there was a, a lot of really, really great uh, information that I learned and a lot of great experiences that I had, uh, and then so, f you know, fast forward to 2012, I started interning at the station uh, and under John Lamagi, and it was at that point that I uh, produced the Ghosting of Medgar Evers, which uh, was based on a well, it was a soundscape of 1964, which was based on the life of Medgar Evers through poetry written by Frank X. Walker and his book uh, of the same name, The Ghosting of Medgar Evers, actually went on to win an NAACP Image Award. And so while I don't claim that, I at least feel like one degree away from it. Um, but that was a pretty, uh, a pretty, pretty wonderful um, moment. And then um, fast forward to 2013, I got brought on part time. And it was at that point that I started doing um, Local Music Mondays. I also produced a, a documentary on the 1964 March on Frankfurt and did a host of other things until 2019 when I was brought on full time. Uh, and, you know, as the morning host of Rock and Roots, I did uh, fill in for Mike Graves back in the day and Joe um, a little bit. But, uh, you know, since 2019, I've been the morning host of Rock and Roots, also host the Crunkadelic Funk Show, which is a show that I started at WRFL. And I'd been doing that here at the station before I've been uh, full time. And, you know, I also do a lot of background production uh, on things. I produced the uh, Kentucky Black Writers Collaborative, uh, Say It Loud, also produced On the Porch with Silas House, the Kentucky Women Writers Radio Hour. Uh, I used to have a podcast with uh, Vice Mayor Dan Wu before he was Vice Mayor. It was called Advanced D&D. &D. Um, you know, I, I've, done a lot of, I've done a lot of things behind the scenes here, and it's just been an absolute joy to uh, really get to, to do this stuff here at WUKY.
I mean, all of this wonderful studio and also talking to this amazing man this afternoon. And let me just start off by asking you, uh, what do you feel? You're, we're seeing all this wonderful art. We're getting ready to hear some amazing music this afternoon. But, Tom, what do you feel that this initiative and this project, Ricochet, and also the gallery opening represents to not only these artists, but also to the community of Lexington, Kentucky? Well, our partnership with Project Ricochet has been a true uh, gem in in our history at WUKY. Uh, it has allowed us to reach a diverse audience, much more diverse audience than ever before. And uh, and the folks at Project Ricochet, Abini and her brother Bilal, all have been so supportive of WKY. Everywhere they go, they will take swag from the station. Uh, they'll take our banner. They have promoted us and uh, and really made us a part of the Project Ricochet family. And then at the same time, we have reciprocated by working with them to put together an art exhibit like the one that, that we have opening today. Uh, we have worked with them on the Project Ricochet podcast, which is the most popular podcast we have ever produced at WKY. And I can't take credit for that. I mean, it is, it's Bilal and Abini and her friends and her colleagues and her board that have made that podcast into such a valuable contribution to of this community. So all of that uh, to say that uh, probably our, our crowning achievement right now is this show. The Urban Art Collective is an amazing assortment of artists. Each one has, you can see as you walk through the building, each one has a different point of view. Uh, we have some art that looks like um, comic book illustration. We have others that are just richly colorful and abstract. We have others uh, based around sports. Um, th these are beautiful works of art. I, I wish I could take all of them home or at the very least keep all of them here at the, at the radio station. But uh, but I know these artists want to sell their art, yes. <laughs> and uh, and we want to help them do that. I mean that's part of why we have the WKY Art Gallery is so that we can expose these artists to our audience and hopefully help them build their careers and sell some of that art. DeBron, you've been with WKY for quite some time, and you have a historical perspective. So talk to us a little bit more about where we've been and where we're going. When it comes to diversity, equity, and inclusion, the station has uh, an interesting history uh, because particularly there have only been two black full-time staff members. One uh, was uh, Patricia Murray, who was the news direct, the former news director. She split her time between WUKY and the uh, journalism department at UK. And then the other one is me in 2019. So, uh, you know, I think that... We have a lot, a long way to go, but that's not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean that we've been sitting here doing nothing. I think that we've actually been able to accomplish a lot since 2019, uh, particularly when it comes to the diversification of the music and the presentation uh, and just, you know, really being intentional with some of the things and sponsors that we have worked with. And that gives me hope for the future. And while it would be very easy to sit here and um, I don't know kind of talk about uh, the station's, you know, missteps, I think that the best thing that we can do together is to, uh, you know, acknowledge those, not hide from them, and focus on how we can be better, how we can continue to be better. Because, uh, you know, I was actually having a conversation with a listener the other day. Uh, it was calling me about um, a song and had made mention to, um, you know, the fact that we play, you know, a lot of women and sometimes we'll play multiple women in a row. And, the, you know, that used to be a little faux pas in, in radio because of misogyny. But, um, you know, it's, that, that has been, you know, is one of those things that is being acknowledged. And what I told the listener is, you know, we don't always get it right, but we, we sure do try most of the time. And I think that that is kind of the crux of where we need to go. One of the other things that was born out of Project Ricochet was this thing called the D-E-I-B-C-A-B. -B. <laughs> we love alphabet we soup love in public acronyms. radio, yes, okay? Yes, we do. So <laughs> would you tell us a little bit about that board well, and what that has meant to well, WKY? DEIB is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. 
and CAB is Community Advisory Board. So the full name is Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Belonging Community Advisory Board. And this is something that we have wanted to do at the station for many years. And we just, we haven't had the the kind of reach into the community that I wanted in order to put an organization like this together until recently. And here again, that partnership with Project Ricochet and Abini El Amin has made such a difference for us at WUKY because she has many contacts that we don't have. Uh, the people that she initially recruited for the board have more contacts and more and more. And so it mushrooms out into the community. And we feel like we are a much more integral part of Lexington than we were even a year ago. And the thing is, is we don't do anything. We can't do anything without our listeners. We do everything for them. And I think that this particular opportunity is a very special one. You know, during the fun drive, we say uh, most of the time, two thirds of our budget comes from our uh, support of listeners just like you. And it's true. I mean, it, it, it is a little corny, but I mean, it's true. And it, particularly when it comes to the DEIB work uh, here at the station, we can't do that without our listeners. And I think that there's a lot we need to do internally uh, before, you know, really kind of going out into the community so that we can, when we do this work, we can come at it from a trauma-informed perspective, uh, you know, we can be a little bit more prepared to be able to engage more authentically. Um, but, you know, when it comes to like the, the community advisory board, it's an important thing. I mean, we want to hear from our listeners all the time. Uh, and particularly in this work, it's wonderful to have um, knowledgeable people uh, who can help us with this mission of creating a more inclusive environment, a more inclusive radio station and uh, programming that reflects our community. So I think that <laughs> the other part of the community advisory board that is important, I think is part of my philosophies around organizing as well, which is everybody has an opportunity to be able to contribute. It doesn't all look the same for everybody and that's okay. It doesn't have to. Um, so, uh, I just think that people should feel empowered to be able to know that they can make change and that it doesn't require, you know, some weird superpowers or, you know, whatever, that it truly is a person to person situation and every single person has an opportunity to contribute. Um, and you know, some people can do more, some people can do less, but the the fact of the matter is that everybody should be able to come to this uh, and, and be able to bring their full authentic selves. Tom, what are your thoughts about how the CAB ties into the WKY diversity and inclusion mission and focus? So, uh, so we've talked about having a community advisory board for many years. Uh, it's been part of our mission uh, since we, we uh, revamped our mission statement about two years ago and created a new strategic plan. And now, finally, we are able to implement it. We've had one meeting so far. And, Renee, I appreciate your participation and the, the ideas that you've brought to it and all of the people who have who've participated in this board. It's a, it's a springboard. It's a way for people who are leaders in this community in Lexington and Central Kentucky to have an opportunity to interact with those of us at the station and give us your perspective on how we can serve you and the community better. DeBron, did I hear you say that you see the cab as an important investment? So as far as the importance of the cab, yeah, it's a very, very important thing. And I think that it's a multifaceted approach because, you know, people need to be able to feel that they have the ability to make change. And I think that when it comes to public radio, what public radio always sells is that anybody can show up, anybody can contribute. It doesn't matter, you know, financially, whether you give $500 or $1, whatever you can give is an investment in the station. And with this work, we are making an investment in our in ourselves and in our community uh, to create a better space. So as it pertains to the present and future of this cab, uh, I, I don't know what will happen in the future. Um, you know, there's a lot of transition that's happening at the station right now, and that, you know, play, factors into into that. But as far as the present goes, uh, the promise that I made to myself and to this community when I got this job was that I would do everything in my power to push the needle uh, and really um, help create a better radio station, a better programming, uh, a better environment 
uh, so that we uh, can connect with our listeners and people can feel seen and represented. Because when people are seen and represented, it makes the world a whole lot better place. Tom, you see the CAB as an initiative to serve the community better? Once again, it's a win-win. It's, it's an opportunity for, uh, for both the board members to, to get their views expressed and to get their ideas into action on the air, on the radio. And it's an opportunity for us to reach deeper into the community and serve the community better. As we close out the podcast, I know, DeBron, you and I have had some conversations in regards to the members that are serving on the cab. What would you like to say to them? I'm very, very grateful for everyone who has agreed to volunteer their time, uh, their energy, their knowledge, their wisdom uh, to this work. And I think that WUKY is in a really, really good place to move forward uh, into a new future. And I just, some of the things we got going on, I'm really excited about. And I, other things that I know that are happening in the community, the future is going to be bright, y'all. Like, I, I, I truly, truly believe it. And, um, yeah, uh, we, 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 we have an opportunity to make change, for sure, for sure. Uh, so that's kind of, yeah, that, that, that's kind of it for me. And I, like I said, I'm just very, very grateful uh, to be able to be part of this process and have a, a very small uh, piece of the history of WUKY. Well, we've come to the close of a, another amazing podcast. I'd like to thank our listeners. I'd like to thank our guest. And as we say here at WKY, we can't do it without our community. And just keep in mind that DEIB is the DNA of humanity. The vision of Project Ricochet is to find practical solutions that assist minority youth who are prone to antisocial behaviors while discovering positive and productive lifestyle alternatives. An overarching goal of Project Ricochet is to work and communicate in genuine ways with existing organizations and groups which have a similar focus as we do. Our programming is distinctive because it provides development opportunities for community and economic empowerment. It's the Ricochet Effect, Ricochet Effect. Ricochet effect, ricochet effect.